I threw these things in the sandblaster and it takes it out pretty well in those corners that are hard to get to with a wire wheel. Up here the sandblaster really made it possible to get all this inside part cleaned up in there. I got around the lug studs and then in here cleaned up most of that paint in the uh, hub area. Okay, do one more coat of Pour 15. I had some of this stuff left over from the Sonnet engine bay, so I figured I'd throw that on. Should be fine for what this truck's doing. Welcome to Duluth Junction Workshop. I'm Tyler. In the last episode of my F600, we took apart the front brakes and found some stuff that really needed some attention. We got a beautiful day today, and we're going to give it that attention. The truck is basically where I left it, and I protected it with some plastic bag here so it wouldn't get the rain. Uh, but it's a pretty nasty spindle here. I gotta clean that up first. And on the table here, we got everything we need to put it back together. Let's start with the drum and wheel bearing. The big one goes on the inside and the seal goes on top of that. The small one goes on the outside. So I'm gonna do the big one first, put the seal on, flip the drum over, and then we can put the uh, small one on. That'll be one big assembly we can throw on the axle. If you've been doing car stuff, you already know how to do this, but essentially you wanna cup the grease in your hand and push it up through the bottom of the bearing there. That'll force it up. As long as you force the grease through one side, you'll know that it's penetrated the entire roller. Oh, Nikki found a mouse. What a goofball. Here's our brand new seal. Some people don't know this, but most auto parts stores actually load out tools. Like the seal installer. Knowing how to use them is a different problem. Nice. We did have some wear marks on the backing plate last time, and I think that was the uh, seal out too far. So I'm just going to tap it in slightly below flush, and we're good. Get ready for some satisfaction, because with that out of the way, we're going to take the old grease off the axle. You did get a little lunch, didn't you? Remember to eat the head first. We're going to throw the backing plate on, but there are a few extra steps I'm going to take in this job, along with a lot of jobs I'm doing in this truck, because um, even though the body is rotten, I am going to uh, fix that. And this car, this truck may see um, some miles in the winter picking up projects or whatever. So I want to make sure that I am giving it the uh, anti-seize and the chemicals that will help it uh, stave off rust if I need to use it in the salty conditions out here in Minnesota. You may remember back in the disassembly episode, we had a heck of a time trying to get some of these bolts out of the uh, spindle area. Part of that was because there was no anti-seize on them. There was no lubrication whatsoever. So we're going to take these. I did not buy new bolts because I didn't want to. And it's expensive enough <laughs> getting the rest of the stuff done. So we're going to give this a nice coating of anti-seize. And that should protect it in the future. And allow these things to come out the next time. There's got to be a better way. There is. If you were paying attention last time, you might remember that this side has four identical bolts with cotter pins through the back, and that is to mount the steering linkages here. 
I think we need to angle that. And on the passenger side, it's actually only two cotter pin bolts on the bottom. So be careful if you're doing the passenger side on these things. <laughs> you don't want to get the bolt in the wrong place and have to redo it. Turked up. Let's throw the cotter pins in. Man, that anisease spreads out more than the British Empire. Anyway, we got a dust cover to put on here. Now, this shields the inner wheel bearing from dust. So, we're going to throw that on. I made a new gasket for it out of, you know, gasket material stock. Not a big deal, but it's good to have on. Then we got one more thing to put on before the shoes. You're not going to believe this, but I actually lost one of the bolts for the wheel cylinder. So I noticed that one of them is a through bolt and one of them is a uh, blind hole. So I'm going to put the, this is the shortest one I could get at the hardware store. I'm going to put that one through the through bolt area and that won't be an issue. And then we'll put the short one in there where it's supposed to be. Oh, looks like my piston thing fell out. So we're also going to have to reuse the push rod here so I sprayed that with some corrosion inhibitor and here are your part numbers. I'll also have part numbers in the description for all the parts I use in this thing. Stuff that you can actually get. So just throwing a little grease on there so it has something to ride on. And we'll slather that in. We'll hit in the camera here. That goes on and then we'll throw the boot back on. Alright that's ready to install in the truck. I reviewed my own video and it looks like the piston points forward on the right and the left. So be careful you get those in the right place. And the backing plates um, have no difference aside from that. So there you go. Remember that rust prevention? This is some of the same stuff I used on the Insight and the Sonnet. So I'm just going to get all the bolts here with the wheel cylinder. They don't really paint these. So if you want any rust protection, you kind of got to put it on yourself. Get all these bolts. And I'll do the back side. Should give that stuff a fighting chance at not being totally rusty next time. Now we got the shoes and all the hardware set up the same way it's going to be in the truck. I am going to hit the back of the shoes with that same rust uh, inhibitor so that it keeps that little surface rust from coming back here. This stuff got just a little bit of a sprinkle when I first brought these home and, and that made that uh, rust already. So I want to make sure I get it protected. Could not get a replacement one of these. This is, goes in the middle of the pivot point and then these springs. The hardware kit I got for this thing had uh, two of these springs. Turns out uh, I need four. So we're putting the old ones back on this side and those are identical actually. So we'll give you the part number for those in the description. Got new springs, new springs. And this one holds the shoes together at the bottom and it kind of lays over the top of that adjustment screw. This one's also going to get the rust inhibitor. Down here we got a brand new dust cap. One really nice thing about these is that all four shoes are the exact same thing. So you don't have to worry about front or rear or anything like that. Got my third hand working for me today. Upright, upright, upright. Sweet, with a finger no less. This side's going to be a little bit more difficult because I have to put the spring in here and the adjuster, it's not a self adjuster, it doesn't adjust itself, so don't call it that. So I'm going to throw that in, oh boy, that's fun, did I get it? Alright, that has to go over the wheel cylinder. Starting to put this thing over the top pivot. It keeps the springs from rubbing on the shoes themselves. The springs are the same either side, and we're going to use the same spring tool that I used last time. So 
This is the removal side, and this is the installation side. Definitely want to wear eye protection. This is kind of a spoon, so it hooks over there, and then you want to pick that up, and done. It's really that easy. Same thing. Drum brakes do get a bad rap for some reasons, but honestly, I don't think they're that hard to work on. You just gotta know a couple tricks and have the right tool. Okay. Quite the unit. Absolute unit. I did deviate slightly from the instructions up here. Um, it does tell you to pack the entire inner of the hub uh, with, with grease, just uh, completely flush with the bearing raises, and that seems excessive to me, like a waste of grease. Um, pretty sure that doesn't actually do anything, so I didn't do it. Out here, I deviated from the procedure because I could not find torque spec for the nut so figured we would just run this up till it felt tight back it off and then uh, go up about pretty close to hand tight here you know standard procedure so just so you know um, if you're doing this that if you can find the specs go for them I couldn't all right we got antices on that thankfully it wasn't rusty <laughs> We'll throw that on. Come on. Get into threads there. One other thing is that I did store the drums with WD-40 inside the braking surface, so I had to make sure that I got back and wiped that out with brake clean afterward. You don't want the braking surface getting too rusty or anything, and you also don't want to leave oil on your brakes. So we are, uh, I think we're good here. I'm going to go and adjust the shoes correctly and we will uh, move on. Thanks for coming along with me on this project. There's one more thing I forgot to mention. The passenger side of the drum is adjusted perfectly and has zero drag whatsoever as the book says it should. The driver's side however is backed all the way off and it still has a little shh what I'm going to do is put the rest of the brake system together, take it for a test drive and see if it kind of beds in place and uh, will allow itself to adjust properly. There's one more thing you can do to adjust the brakes on these. You can loosen that big nut on the back of the backing plate and adjust the position of the pivot pin and that will help you center the shoes inside the drum. I'm not going to do that now. I tried not to get into that because that thing looks like a big pain to get off and I actually painted over the nut. So we're gonna try to drive the truck first and see if that solves itself. That's enough brake stuff for me today, but yesterday I almost finished bending up all the new NICOP lines for this truck, for the front of the truck at least. And we are going to do that in the next episode. So stay tuned, come on back. We're gonna throw the master cylinder in. We're gonna throw the brake lines in, the hoses, bleed the system, we're gonna bleed the hydrovac and should be able to take this thing on a drive with actual brakes, not just that drum on the transmission. So thank you for watching and press on. What are you a wasp? What are you doing? Get out of here. Go. Go away. Bet the wasp came from my transmission planter, didn't it? Gosh, this thing is nice. Just love it. What a good use for an automatic transmission.